and also complaining that we have refused to take this issue out of the media, out of public domain. We shall not stop. We want our people back. You also saw that in this desperate attempt to divert us, the regime through their uh, RDC in Kayunga paraded a fake Martin Lukwago, claiming that Martin Lukwago, who has been missing for more than a year, had shown up. Of course, the wife of Martin Lukwago and the children dismissed this fake man. That was not Martin Lukwago. The regime fell flat on their face. We are informed that they are holding on to that man, but the same thing, the same story as all of you remember that uh, the military spokesperson presented a man that was burnt, but this time having compromised him to lie that we are the ones who burnt him. We continue to demand for our people. And yes, it is for that reason that we have been moving the world over, calling upon all allies of Uganda in the West to take this gross human rights violation very serious. Thank you very much, man. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to remind you, we had the opportunity to document gross human rights violations that happened before, during, and after the 2021 elections. And yes, we have a film, a documentary film, that's showing the real picture of Uganda to the international community. Not only that, but we have been knocking on various doors demanding that the United States, the European Union, and all these other democracies across the world stop dealing with General Museveni as if they are dealing with a legitimate leader. We have singled out those regime people, the high-ranking military officials and uh, officials in other institutions that are involved in gross uh, human rights violations for targeted sanctions. I am happy to report that on top of people like Kare Kaihula, on top of people like Abel Kandiho and Erweru, um, recently, Biabasheja, who hates prisons, was sanctioned. Now these sanctions, what do they mean? These people steal money, taxpayers' money from Uganda, and they are rich, they invest this money abroad. That's where they go for medical treatment, that's where they take their children for, for all that they need, and yes, they treat Uganda as a cemetery. But gladly with these sanctions, they and their families are sanctioned. They cannot only, they can not only try, um, they are not only blocked from traveling to those countries, but also their wealth is confiscated. On that list, there are notorious human rights violators like a one Christopher Damolida. Most of you that have been arrested and taken to CMI, you know the role that Christopher Damolida is playing in abducting and murdering our people. So we know that on that list, we have Christopher Damolida, we have people like Rugumayo, we have people like Namanya Napoleon, and all top and middle level you know, officers in Museveni's government, we are focusing on them and we are calling on the international community to sanction these people. Probably when they know that there are repercussions for their actions, they will stop these gross uh, human rights violations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, another issue I want to address is the recently passed supplementary budget. The regime